Hey everybody, welcome to Live at Five. It is Thursday, March 8th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are joined here in the studio by Matt Roden. Hi everybody. And we have a great guest today. We Who's have a here? fantastic have Andrew, guest. Andrew Polk. The, the band's visit. The Broadway smash the band's visit. Yes. Very excited to chat with him. But before we talk to Andrew, Matt, why don't you tell us about today's top five? Today they announced who's playing Usnavi at the Kennedy Center. Well, we knew, but this is a replacement, right, Ryan? I think no, this is another Paul? This Paul? is This is a switcheroo. Another. Uh, so Anthony Ramos from Hamilton. Of mm -hmm. course, he played Philip. Hamilton, yes, he did. The, That's who I, the, I saw as Philip. Yeah. The son of Alexander Hamilton. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And Alexander Hamilton was played by Lin Manuel Miranda, obviously, originally. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to play his famous role in, in the Heights, Usnavi. Usnavi. Uh, at the Kennedy Center. So they're doing this super fun uh, concert version of In the Heights, March 21st to the 25th, directed and choreographed by Stephanie Clemens. And Joshua Grasso, who is an actor who's played Usnavi regionally to right. great acclaim, had to drop out uh, due to a foot injury. So oh. Anthony Ramos is taking over. And this, of course, also stars Vanessa Hudgens, Ana Villafania, Eden Espinosa, and a lot of other great people, including the fantastic Alicia Roman as the Paragua guy. Yes, fantastic Paragua. cast. Like, you it's have a to have great him. cast. Yeah. Um, we found out today that Smokey Joe's, the musical, is coming off Broadway. Yeah, so 1995, Tony nominated Best Musical, Smokey Joe's Cafe, is going to Stage 42. I always forget the name of that theater, too. <laughs> well, it hasn't always <laughs> been Stage 42. It used to be the Little Schubert. That's right. That's okay, why you're confused. Yes. All right, so it's going to Stage 42. This is happening um, July 6th, so this summer. It'll begin pre previews, and it will open on July 22nd. Tony nominee Joshua Burgos from On the Town. He is directing and choreographing, but we don't know who's going to be in it. This production yeah. was originally uh, being prepared for Broadway. Yes. I mean, we were hearing right. that yeah. they were going to bring while. Smokey Joe's back to Broadway like a year ago. So we've right. kind of been waiting to find out what happened. You know, they had some great workshops. So it'll be at not the little Schubert. No. Stage, Stage 42, 42. Which is what we were talking about yesterday. That's where When Pigs Fly was going to be. You're obsessed with, <laughs> with Pigs Fly. <laughs> or with Stage 42. Who knows? Uh, Mary Lou Henner coming back to Broadway. Paul? Mary Lou Henner, Paul. <laughs> Mary Lou Henner is a super talented Golden Globe nominee. She was on Taxi. She was when on I was Taxi. A kid. I used to love uh, Nick she's at amazing. Night. And I also, but her number one credit right now is that she remembers every day in her life. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you don't know this? You've never no. seen her do this? No. She knows every day in history. Like if you said, what? Mary Lou Henner. When did you meet like um, Tony Danza for the first time? She would She'd say the exact date like, and location. Can she, she go, has this weird Can skill. she go the other direction? That's like, crazy. can she say like, can you give her a date and then at, you can? She can do that. She you can, can give her a date. She can tell you what anything. happened on that day. That's Mary Lou Henner. No, I'm just. This is not what we're talking about. This is, <laughs> but but look it up on YouTube because That's she's amazing. done this on talk shows and it's amazing. She's joining the cast of getting the My band back song. together. That summer musical at the Velasco Theater that yes. we talked about before. Uh, she will play Sharon Papadopoulos. I'm sure she's going to be <laughs> sassy. Um, and we saw her in Chicago. She was a great Roxy she was Hart. So good. She was the first replacement Roxy That's Hart. That's right. Uh, Tale of the Allergist Wife, Social Security, Pal Joey, over here, and Greece. She was in Greece back in the day. That's with, like, right. Travolta. And I forgot. Anyway, yeah. um, she earned five Golden Globe nominations for playing Elaine Nardo on Taxi. I loved her in Taxi. Uh, and oh, she's been doing her solo show, A Memorable Evening with Mary Lou Henner. Why haven't we caught that yet? I don't know. Get it? Why? Memorable. Yeah, just... Memorable. She remembers. Oh. Come on, come See on, that? right? You know what? We think it, was all, it was all on brand. the paper. It was on brand. Uh, it's starting on July 19th with opening night set for August 13th. And I can't wait to see Mary Lou Henner because she's always lovely. That's uh, right. Stephen Rea, is that how we pronounce his last Ray. name? Ray. Ray. Stephen Ray is heading to the public theater. Ryan. Yes. He's going to be furious that you don't know how to say his name. He's coming back to the public theater. So oh. he's doing a production of Cypress Avenue. Um, so this was a play that he did it in London. And now this is a transfer. It was at the Royal Court Theater in London. Um, and this is David Ireland's play. And he plays a Belfast unionist who has a granddaughter who looks like the Ir Irish Republican leader. And he loses his mind. So is that all the plot you that's, have? That, no, there's more here, but I really wanted to do layman's terms. <laughs> so, Stephen Ray was in The Crying Game. The Crying Game, he oh got an God, Oscar nomination like for iconic. that. He also yeah. got a Tony nomination for his Broadway debut in Someone Who Will Watch Over Me. I saw that. They did not sing the song in that show. It was a what? play. 
It was a play. They didn't sing wow. the Gershwin song. But he got Unless a Tony nom. I'm pretty sure a, they didn't. It's just titled that. A few words that have been used to describe this Cypress Avenue are shocking, violent, <laughs> humorous, unsettling, and provocative. What? That's so, real? I mean, okay. yeah. That's, I was looking it all up. It sounds very interesting. Um, so this will happen June 2nd. It goes to the public theater, and it will open on June 25th. And then we can add our own adjectives. And then we can describe it however we want it. Uh, we got a new video today of Kat McPhee singing some She Used to Be Mine. Catherine McPhee yes. is going into Waitress. Did you know that? I, I did. I can't wait. You did wait. know that. Well, Sarah Bareilles uh, actually is leaving the show this Sunday. We, and then we don't yeah. know who's playing it until April 10th yeah. when um, Catherine McPhee starts. But you can get a sneak peek of her performance. And she's a great singer, by the way. Uh, she's so good. She's singing She Used to Be Mine, which is a song you know. If yeah. you're watching this show, I'm sure you know that You've song. You've listened to it Go a lot. to Broadway.com right now to watch it. Listen. I actually it. have not watched it yet, so I'm really? going to go yes. and enjoy it Paul, let while us know you can what do you your think. interview. Yes, Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about today's guest? I would love to. Andrew Polk was born and raised in Berkeley, California. He attended Tufts University, after which he received a Fulbright scholarship to train as an actor at London's Weber Douglas Academy of Dramatic Art. Some banging bottles in here. He began his career by playing Epstein in the national tour of Biloxi Blues by Neil Simon. He founded the Cape Cod Theater Project, where he was the artistic, direct, artistic director, those are the words, for 17 years. And now he's making his Broadway debut in the band's visit. And he's here today to chat about that. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Polk and Ryan. Hello. Sir, does all that right. does that intro feel like this is your life it's at all? Really <laughs> it's really impressive. Right. Who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great, right? Yes, but your Broadway debut, sir, in I the band's visit, one of the most acclaimed musicals I've heard about in so long. How does it feel to be a part of this show that is just adored? Right uh, now? It feels great, you know. Um, yeah, it took me a while to get to Broadway. Yeah. Um, well, you've been busy. But it I've wasn't been busy. like you were just twiddling no. thumbs. Yeah. Uh, but it feels great. You know, I, it's one of those rare experiences where I, uh, sometimes people accuse me of being a perfectionist. Okay. And I got thrown into a situation where everyone's a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. I think the cast is so brilliant and they're all uh, just at the top of their game. Yeah. And, and then you're working with David Yazbek, David Cromer, Edamar Moses. Right. It's sort of a it's a rare experience, and it's great. Yeah, it sounds like a pretty perfect way to make your Broadway debut. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But you've been a part of the show for a while. Like you, you were, you did it off Broadway as yeah, well. Yeah, we did. We did it at the Atlantic mm -hmm. uh, Theater a uh, year and a half ish ago. Yep, yep. And uh, went great and sold out and everything like that. Yeah. And then we had a sort of an eight nine month gap, and we came to Broadway. Um, and it's been wonderful because I don't do a lot of musicals, and so that aspect of it has right. been really. Really uh, terrifying, but also, <laughs> but also yeah, you didn't exhilarating. Make this debut easy for yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah. So uh, no, it's been it's been just so great. No, and David Yazbek is just. I mean, when you're talking oh, about man. the some of the best, some of anyone the greats, who can rhyme awful with falafel, <laughs> you, you gotta yes, say you hey, have man. to say deserves to be in the books. That's, That's right there, yeah. baby. No, but how is it working with him and being able to sing? Because he. Uh, we are all big fans of all of his scores, but there, there's just something spell casting about this score. How is it to be to, to well, be a part of this? It's it's wonderful, and you know, if, I'm lucky in the sense that the way um, the whole creative team has approached the music has been really organically. Mm -hmm. So that uh, it, we've been really pushed to to just let the music come from the organic place that the scene goes. Mm -hmm. So I never felt like I was like pushing into be to and now I'm gonna sing. Right. Uh, right. Oh, nothing wrong with that. There's a place for that. Sure. But that's not this musical. Right. And so for me, that's been really great. So all of a sudden, you find yourself singing, and yeah. it feels very natural. It does. It and does. I think that's a, cr a tribute to David Yazbek and wanting that kind of organic place, and also uh, to David Cromer, the director. Yeah. Who, made, who was so brilliant. He just put us all in a place to just you know. You, there have been many rehearsals where. He would say, you know, that looks like something you would do in a musical. Mm -hmm. Let's not do that. Let's do this. Let's let's, you know, nothing wrong with that. But let this make this make this real. Yeah, one of my favorite aspects of the whole show. I, I love the show, but I love that even when there are just you know normal talking scenes sort of happening, there's always light music being played. You right. can always see the band members around. That's right. It's just so enchanting. They've incorporated. Uh, world-class musicians mm -hmm. who play these uh, Arabic uh, instruments that you might 
I don't think they've ever been on a Broadway I've stage seen them. before. I know, not that I remember. Um, yeah. On stage, live, uh, right. and these musicians are uh, uh, not only brilliant, but they there's an improvisational quality to it. Mm. So Yazbek has written the score, but these musicians play it differently every night, certain sections. Right. So it's really exciting. Yeah. You never know. You know, there's a real edgy aspect to the experience right totally. we don't quite know what they're gonna play right and you also have like th you have there's a family connection involved for you in yes. this whole show right so yes. tell tell us a little bit about my beautiful talented wife zoe uh, uh zohar mm -hmm. is israeli and she is the dialect coach for all the israelis i play an israeli and also the dramaturg and so and actually uh, her getting that job had nothing to do with me uh, she right. was, referred, no she was yeah. of her own volition and uh, ref referrals. And so, um, however, I am living with the dialect coach. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so you, you have to be I a mean, plus student. <laughs> let's say I get notes, <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's actually, but, uh, seriously, no, and you're fantastic at it. Oh, she, both of you, both of you, you so much. do great. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, yeah, it's gratifying. Sometimes I'll come out back off, you know, um, uh, in the outside the stage door, and there'll be Israelis, and they'll they'll start speaking Hebrew to me. I'm like, dude. And then you, with your I'm California. from California. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't know. And, but thank you. But I fooled you. <laughs> and also, but isn't other, and that's I, a tribute to Zoe. Yeah, and then I read somewhere that you, even the character you play is based a little bit, or there are elements of him that have come from your father-in-law, who sadly passed away. Yeah, I. Um, I kind of pulled from a lot of places, mm -hmm. but um, I had never been to Israel until I met my wife, and now I've been many, many times, and I have this fantastic family and culture that I've been thrown into, and right. I got very close to her father, who's this great guy, and um, he also embodied a lot of really great Israeli characteristics that I stole from. <laughs> um, there's a physicality, there's a, a way they communicate, very honest, very direct, mm -hmm. which is very, to me, very refreshing, but if you're not used to it, can be shocking. Right. Um, so I stole from here, stole from there, a little bit from her mother. Yeah. Um, some from her friends. Well, just the best actors are the little thieves. So uh, they just take I little, would say, yeah, you know. and, and from being there, you really get a, it really helped me just sort of live in this guy. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find yourself, because I know, like, especially when I've seen it, the, the audience gets very emotional. You know, it, it's a very an emotion, very emotional show. It's very touching. It Do you ever find yourselves, like, caught up in all of that, like, to the point where you're, you know, it's hard for you up there? That's a you great. Know? You know, the only thing that I will say is that um, we had an odd experience um, off-Broadway because we were still staging the thing in previews. So we didn't really know what we had. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was a great show. I didn't know what impact it would have on people. And somehow, in the middle of previews, people would come back af afterwards and they were just in tears and yeah. really moved. And so there are times when, uh, after it is over, I feel like I'm taking care of people a little bit. Mm -hmm. Cause be and I, I find, I mean, it's really beautiful. And, but people get really emotionally and wrapped up. And you're like, sure. it's all right, you know. Yeah. But uh, I get it. But we don't feel that kind of journey up there mm -hmm. necessarily. But um, because we're having our e it, the whole piece is really little snippets of life, right? In this Israeli town, and so you're kind of going in and out of those snippets. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I do. Uh, we want to take some questions from some viewers and mm -hmm. some fans Sweet. in a moment. Um, but I do also want to talk about. You have a couple of really exciting projects coming up very soon. I watched the trailer for Instinct today yeah. Yeah. on CBS with Alan Cumming. That starts March 18th, I believe. That's what. I, that's right. March how, 18th. how was that project? It was awesome. You know, um, it, it's it's a great it's a great show. I think people are going to really like the yeah, show. I'm very excited. It looks so Alan good. Cumming is great. He's charismatic oh. and he's the nicest human being in the world. And everyone is involved in that show. There was a really fun chemistry that I haven't felt in a lot of television mm -hmm. sets. Um, and it's a very interesting genre. It's a sort of, it's a procedural, but it's funny. Yeah, and it's right. And it's fun. You've got Alan Cumming. You've got Alan <laughs> Cumming, but it, you know, you're dealing with serial murders yeah. as well. So they've kind of got a unique thing going. He's an openly gay character. Which um, is a first for CBS. A, it's a first yeah. for a procedural, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. And and the way that is handled is, I think, you know, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just it's sort of like a background normalized sort of 
aspect of the show that I, I, I appreciate. And um, got, and every, they, you know, it's got Whoopi Goldberg. And yeah, it's, it's great, yeah. It's a great cast. It looks and fantastic. Proud to be part of it. That's yeah. great. And then also, you recently worked with Adam Sandler and Chris Rock. Yeah, for man. Netflix is the week of. Right? Yeah, that was fun. It's, that's I did it all you summer. You had already been familiar with Netflix. You've done House of Cards, right? Before, so you knew the Netflix mode. But what right. was it like doing this project? It was great. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I. There was a moment when I was working on. The, I did it all summer, and there was a moment when I was doing a scene with Chris Rock and Adam Sandler and Robert Smigel, who's the director, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Rachel Dratch. And I, I, I kind of looked around. And I'm like, wow, I am <laughs> literally working with the funniest people on yeah, earth. Yeah, I can't. I can't um, imagine. And they really were. And uh, and it was delightful. You know, Adam Sandler is. Uh, I don't know if many people know this, apart from being so talented. Uh, and successful, he's just the menchiest guy. <laughs> he's just a great guy. Treated everyone so well. And, oh, that's so good to and hear. Made the whole experience super. And uh, you know, I've been also a huge fan of Robert Smigel for a yeah, long time. So good. Triumph yeah. the insult out. Come on. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but it was it was it was funny. Uh, I think there was one moment when I was I was improvising one of the scenes, and you know, I, I felt pressure to be funny. Right. Because look who I was I working mean, with. Surrounded by yeah. And, it, and Robert Smigel very kindly sort of took me aside and went, you know, look, we got it. <laughs> the comedy thing. He's just, yeah. you're great. Just do your thing, man. <laughs> We're okay. Yes, <laughs> <With> sir. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I loved him for that. And um, he was delightful to work with. The, but they had, like, stand-up comedians on staff uh, mm. on the set, you know, who write alternative lines right there. Right, right on the spot like really? that, yeah. So it was really fun. It's a really funny movie. They both, the both, both look great. I yeah. can't wait for both. Matt, do we have we have some viewers? Oh, some fans? yes. <laughs> um, David wants to know any special memories from doing Angels in America at the Alliance. Mm. What a great question. You know, it's funny that's really come back in vogue now that they're doing it on Broadway. Yes. And yeah, yeah. There's and just this got book a out. Of Olivier nominations. Uh, yeah, right, right. And they, there's this book out um, where they interviewed a lot of people who've been involved, who have done Angels in America called. Um, the world only spins, spins forward or something like I that? I believe so, oh, yeah. Cool. I, they didn't ask me. But uh, um, now you have. <laughs> you know, I will say that uh, yeah. you know, I love Angels in America, um, and I played Lewis, mm. and I will say that it, you know, I, I think it's one of the great plays I've ever written, and I worked, Kenny Leon directed that wow. production. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we worked with Tony Kushner on it. It is. He's always intimately involved, right? I think Tony Kushner. I loved it, but I, I, I don't know if this is ever spoken about. Playing that character for seven and a half hours is is hard, because Lewis, yeah. uh, for those who know the play, is is kind of he's kind of dumped on for about seven and a half straight hours. He's a bad guy. It took a bit of a toll right. on me. I can imagine. And yeah. um, that may be something most people don't know. Um, but I I just. Just to live in those words and be with those people and those characters was just great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Do down. Do down. Do down. Favorite song in the band's visit. Alec wants to know. Favorite yeah. song in the band's visit. Apart from my. Apart song, from the beat of your. The heart. beat of your heart. Uh. Wow. I would have to say. Apart from my song. Um, my son always says, my favorite song is your song, Daddy. <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> Good <laughs> answer. You can yes. remain my son. <laughs> is, uh, I love Answer Me. Oh, yeah. Um, so and there's so many great songs, but I really love Answer Me. It's the final song, and we all feel the audience kind of changing there, being moved by uh, m the first time the whole company gets to sing together mm -hmm. is in that song. Right. Uh, it feels right uh, to do, you know, so I love that song. Uh, George wants to know how did you get involved with the show? Did you just audition, or what was the uh, what was the process? The process was kind of hilarious because uh, they Edomar Moses, who wrote the book, right, um, uh, wanted to hear a new version of the book. So uh, the Atlantic Theater asked me and some other kind of TV-ish actors who weren't musical theater oriented. Mm -hmm. I think they wanted actors who were good but had no designs on actually doing a musical. Right, yeah. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know it was a musical. I knew that David Cromer was directing it. I'm a huge fan. So I was really excited to be asked to read the book. So I get there, and this guy, this bald guy, um, every once in a while, as we're reading it, would hit his boom box and start playing songs. And I thought, oh, wow, I guess it's a musical. And that was, Dave, <laughs> that was David Yazbek oh, playing okay. his demos. I had no idea. <laughs> so as I'm leaving... They obviously liked what I was doing, and they asked, uh, do you sing? And I said, 
Yeah. I can. Uh, <laughs> sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. And so then they had, I had to audition and played the cello. I sang. Wow. They had what, me play. The ringer. I uh, had four <laughs> auditions, which ended with an hour long audition with the musical director, Andrea Grody. Mm hmm. Uh, they were kind of like kicking the tires. They're like, you know, he seems, he seems good, but I don't know. Yeah, he's good. Let's just test him out. <laughs> so that's how it happened for me. And that's, we got the, did the workshop after that. And we did off Broadway and then went to Broadway. Right. David wants to know if you couldn't be an actor or you weren't an actor, what would you do? What would your, what would your career be? I don't know, but I've always wanted to be a ski bum. Really? Yeah. A ski yeah. Bum. I used, grew up skiing and I just, my fa it's not really a career. I've never Water been or snow? Snow. Okay. I'd, like, you know, there's a f part of me that would just like to chuck it all and be a, just be a ski bum. I understand. I mean, work, you know, work at the. Yeah, work at the slope. Work yeah. at the slope. Yeah, ski on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's not going to happen. Do a shift at the cafe. Or a DJ. <laughs> A DJ? Yeah, yeah. Really? Now, like, what kind of DJ are we talking? Are we talking, like, bar mitzvah DJ? Or are we talking about, like, club DJ? Because those are two very different things. <laughs> I want to create my own, my own, Unless my own happy thing endings. where everyone gets to listen to the music I love and they dance and um, they're just... But that's uh, that's really not going to happen for me either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I think we'd like to keep you on stage, and we'd like to keep you on our screens. Um, we we love the show. You are fantastic, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming by My and ch pleasure. chatting with us. The seat is always yours. Join Thank us you. anytime. Make sure you go see the band's visit at the Barrymore Theater with Andrew Polk and that incredible cast. Matt, why don't you tell us about tomorrow's guest? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You know this already, but you can watch Live at 5 every single weekday at 5 p.m. here on Broadway.com's Facebook page. And if you're listening to us right now, that makes me happy. But if you're not, and you want a different way to consume this show, you can listen to the Live at 5 podcast, which we release every single day right after Live at 5. And you should subscribe if you, if you haven't done that already. Come back tomorrow. We're going to be joined by Wicked's Amanda Jane Cooper, Galinda herself. We will see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody.